Okay, hello everyone. Uh, thank Hi. you for joining us today for this uh, fifth webinar. Um, I'm, let me introduce myself uh, first briefly. So my name is Adam Mezan. I'm working as a project manager at Fugent for Droplet-based uh, application. And today I'm with my colleague, uh, Valère. So Valère, yeah. please introduce yourself. So yeah, I'm Valère Echanger, so the assistant for Bastien Cox, uh, the communication manager of Fugent. So yeah, today, uh, Adrien Devand, uh, technology lead at Sequoia Technologies, uh, will be presenting the Raydrop, a universal, uh, universal droplet generator based on a non amp co-flow focusing. Um, so just a few notes uh, before we get started. Um, if you have any questions during the presentation, please uh, use the chat uh, panel available uh, from the top right side of the screen, and uh, our team will answer them right away. Uh, or um, we'll bring them uh, up after uh, the presentation. Um, a recording version of the webinar uh, will be, of course, available from tomorrow. Uh, and um, at two moments in the webinar, this is an important point, uh, you will be asked questions through the surveys, uh, through two surveys. So you will see a pop-up in the chat, uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll let you answer it uh, when it comes. So yeah, it's now time to start, and uh, I will let uh, Adrien so I give you the Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, thank you, Adam and Valère, for this introduction. My name is uh, Adrien Dewand, and I work at Sequoia Technologies. And today, with Benoit Scheid from the Université Livre de Bruxelles, I'm going to give you this webinar on droplet microfluidics in general, and with a special focus on a droplet device called Redrop that we have developed at Sequoia. First. Let me uh, shortly introduce. Let me first uh, let me introduce the both companies. Sorry. Okay. Uh, involved in the preparation of this webinar, Frigent and Sequoia. Frigent is a French company providing instrumentation for free control in microfluidics, um, including pressure control for the precise control and, uh, and stable control of microfluidic feeding. Uh, in for devices. They are present worldwide and their instrument is daily used uh, in most of microfluidics labs, I think. Sequoia is a Belgian company founded in very recently by a team of scientists from the Université Libre de Bruxelles with various expertise fields. The goal of Sequoia is to propose expertise and equipment for the pharma R&D and production. Actually, we propose four technologies that have in common a precise control of fluids in a well-designed micro or milli part of the equipment, including an emulsification technology, the topics of today. Uh, to be able to propose this last technology, emulsification technology, to the end user, we have formed a partnership with Frigent uh, that is now the official distributor of the droplet generator I'm going to talk to you about today. But first, why to make droplets? If you attend this webinar, you probably have an interest in droplets and you probably have a specific application in mind. But each of you may have a different application. So I will just give you a rapid and an exhaustive overview of such applications sorted in two categories, biochemical reaction and analysis and material generation. For biochemical reaction and analysis, each droplet is considered as a reactor with improved mixing and mass transfer over short diffusion distances. Thus, these reactors show remarkable advantages. The first is miniaturization. The droplets are small in the range of sub nanoliter scale, making single cell or molecular analysis possible. The second is compartmentalization. Droplets can be manipulated independently and so used as individual units for reaction. The third is uh, parallelization. Droplets are monodispersed and identical. So they provide large scale reaction platforms for high throughput analysis. In this category, you will find small molecule detection, uh, cell manipulations, uh, single cell analysis, drug discovery, etc. For material fabrication, droplet microfluidics is a very adaptable tool for the generation of nano or macro-sized particles. In nanoparticle synthesis, 
the precise control of reaction kinetic and thermodynamic parameters allow to produce nanoparticles with a tunable size. And in microparticle synthesis, because of the droplets are generated in a highly controllable way, the production efficiency and particle monodispersity are much higher than with conventional emulsification methods. In this category, we'll find synthesis of nanoparticles and liposomes, polymer microparticles and microcapsule for drug release, etc. Now the question is why to use microfedics to, to generate uh, droplets? Um, I already gave the answer on the precedent slide actually. It's all about control and size distribution. Using traditional methods as batch emulsification, by example, you will produce droplets and particles with a broad size distribution. While using a microfedic device, you will immediately obtain particles with a target size and a very narrow size distribution. In the case of encapsulation of a therapeutic molecule for drug release, by example, the width of the distribution can be a key factor for fine control of the drug delivery over time. And in the case of the production of beads for chromatography or purification, by example, the size distribution of the beads is directly correlated with the resolution of the separation. Now let's look at the existing microfedic technologies for droplet generation. I know that there are lots of them, but I will only focus on the two most used in academic and R&D lab. The first is the planar flow focusing. A liquid phase called the dispersed phase or droplet phase is pushed into a cross junction. And in the cross, the dispersed phase is laterally squeezed by another emissible phase called the continuous phase. As a result, the jet of the dispersed phase is pinched until a drops, uh, drop comes off. This design allows to produce uh, small monodispersed droplets at high flow rates, which ships in many materials. Uh, it can be PDMS, plastic like uh, polycarbonate or glass. The production regime is, this, in, is the dripping regime, where the droplets are generated close to the junction. It is more stable and monodispersed than the jetting regime where the droplets are generated far from the junction in the output channel. Of course, the jetting, there is a limit and the jetting can arise if you apply a too high uh, flow rate. In the planar flow focusing, as the dispersed phase is always in contact with the chip walls at the junction, a coating has to be applied to avoid wetting issues. From my experience, I know that coating is a complicated, complicated matter because depending on the chemicals present in your phases, it will be altered and finally you will get wetting issues. The change in performance can arise after months, days or minutes. And of course, the chips are not versatile. The coating is either hydrophobic or hydrophilic for water in oil or oil in water respectively. Another system widely used is in lab because it is very fast and easy to make is the axis symmetric co-flow. A small tubing, usually glass capillary, is centered in a large tubing using a T-connector. The dispersed phase, the droplet phase, is introduced in the, in the capillary in red on the, on the slide. And the continuous phase is injected uh, using the T-connector. And it goes all around the dispersed phase. In this case, there is no geometrical restriction. So the perturbation allowing to control the destabilization of the jet is less dramatic than in the flow focusing. And the device produces only big droplets at low flow rates. In theory, you will have no waiting issue with uh, the, the system because there is uh, no contact between the droplets and the wall of the output capillary, out output tubing. But in practice, it will depend of the centering of the capillary in the tubing. And uh, I know from my experience that this centering is not easy to achieve and is difficult to keep over time. In conclusion, the Holy Grail would be a device combining the advantages of both flow focusing and co-flow with no wetting issue, without the need of coating and producing small droplets I have flow rates in the dripping regime.
Actually, this design almost exists. It was developed by the Dave Waits group in Harvard in the early 2000s. They introduced uh, two cylindrical capillaries with a cone-shaped tip in a square section tube to guarantee the centering. This technology is thus a combination of a co-flow and a flow focusing, a co-flow focusing, working in the dripping regime and in a confined chamber. The two tips you see on the, on the slide are created by a skill-dependent capillary heating, pulling, and breaking process using dedicated equipment. And then the device is assembled on a glass slide and uh, needles are glued over the capillaries to connect the device with tubing that inject the, the fluids. So this beautiful technology led to the production of an impressive amount of publications, but its realization, realization is technically challenging and reproducibility is not easy as well as the cleaning. Another less common capillary device is based on the alignment of two capillaries without shaped uh, tips in a large chamber. A technology developed by the group of Gorio at the University of Sevilla. In this case, the droplet production relies on the destabilization of a stretch jet of the dispersed phase by a very viscous continuous phase in the extraction tubing, a mechanism called tip streaming. However, the system exclusively works in the jetting regime, which does not prove guarantee the droplet monodispersity associated with the dripping regime. Both designs have again their pros and cons. But as you can see on the flow regime versus confinement space, on the right of the, of the slide, there still exists a virgin land. Actually, the combination of the two precedent designs, the white design, in a non-embedded chamber, a case we called the non-embedded flow focusing. To fill this promising, this promising box, we developed a new device, the red drop. The red drop is made of a metallic chamber filled with the continuous phase in which two inserts supporting glass capillaries are introduced on the lateral sides in such a way that the capillaries are perfectly aligned and almost in contact at the center of the chamber. A nozzle printed with a submicrometric resolution 3D printer of Nanosky company is fixed onto the tip of the ejection glass capillary. The input capillary provides the dispersed phase while the output capillary collect the droplets. At the entrance of the output capillary, the continuous phase pressurized in the chamber is subject to a dramatic acceleration because of the change of section and squeezes the droplet phase flowing out the nozzle, resulting in the formation of droplets. By comparison with the confined co-flow focusing, this non-confined design allows to work with more viscous continuous phase at high flow rates because the pressure drop is dramatically, is dramatically reduced. In addition, from the non-expert and end-user perspective, it presents practical benefits. A reproducible fabrication technique because of the use of the 3D printed nozzle and the alignment of capillaries based only on mechanical tolerances, what make it marketable, contrary to other capillary devices, a good observation condition through the two glass windows closing the chamber, a connection to the fluid reservoir using standard upchurch fittings, and the possibility to fully disassemble the device for cleaning. And the, okay, and finally, the possibility to change one insert if a capillary is damaged, or if you want to change the nozzle or extraction capillary size or both. We characterized the, the device first in the water in oil case using this experimental setup. A reservoir of both phases are pressurized using a pressure controller and fluid flow rates are monitored using flow meters. We tested two couples of nozzle extraction capillaries. The couple one, with a 30 micrometer diameter nozzle 
and 150 micrometer diameter extraction capillary, and a couple two with a 90 micrometer nozzle and a 450 micrometer extraction capillary. This graph uh, of the experimental results show four information. The flow rate on the droplet phase, QD, on the horizontal axis. The flow rate of the continuous phase, QC, on the vertical axis. The size of the droplets, proportional to the size of the bullet. And finally, the droplet generation frequency indicated by the color scale. We observe with the geometry of couple one that droplets are generated in a range of diameter from approximately 50 to 120 microns with a high monodispersity characterized by a coefficient of variation less than 2%. For a given QD, the droplet diameter decreases by increasing QC. Okay, this is no surprise. But what is more remarkable is that for a given QC, yes, in this slide, uh, for a given QC, the droplet size remains very stable as QD is increased, with a maximum radius variation of 15% at the maximum QC. Another thing to note is that when the system operates for QC larger than 200 microliter per minute, the dripping to jetting transition represented by the, the dashed line reaches a plateau indicating that the dripping to jetting transition is, long, is only determined by the geometry in this region. In this case, the droplet generation frequency is in, increases to reach a maximum more than 5,000 Hertz. We also tested the sensitivity of the device to small geometrical modifications, such as a small misalignment of both capillaries and the effect of the addition of a surfactant on the, in the continuous phase. But in both tests, droplet size was identical to days obtained with no such modifications. Okay, now for the geometry of couple two, droplets can be generated in a range of diameter from 120 to 400 microns. As for couple one, a dripping to jetting transition is observed when QD is increased above a threshold value, although a plateau where value was not yet reached here for increasing QC up to the maximum value uh, because we reached the limit of the pressure controller. In this situation, because of a less resistive geometry than with couple one, we could decrease QC for a fixed QD. And in this case, we could observe another dripping to jetting transition uh, that arise for QC between five and 6,000 microliters per minute. This experimental observation was then used to validate the numerical model I'm going to talk about in a little while. You can see the jetting, the jetting to dripping transition on the, the pictures on the, on the right of the, of the slides. We finally showed the versatility of the device by generating droplets of a wide, of a wide variety of fluid couples. Water in oil, uh, oil in water, organic solvent in oil, organic solvent in water, polymer, alginate, etc. And again, without coating needed. So all these droplets can be generated using the same device, provided that we clean it carefully before testing new fluids. Then we develop an original numerical model to describe the droplet formation in this non-embedded co-flow focusing case. First, to better understand the physics involved in the formation, but also to get a useful predictive tool, as you will see. I will not go into detail of the model, but I want just to highlight the fact that this model is a complete description of what happens in the raindrop, based on the numerical resolution of the Navier-Stokes equation. So no experimental result is needed to find a fit parameter, as in most droplet size scale low equation. The full model was first validated using experiments. As you can see on the image, green lines generated by the model perfectly fits the droplets during and after the formation. 
and in both couple of cases. Then uh, we simplify, we, we made a simplifying assumption to make the model usable as a straightforward predictable tool to investigate the influence of all the parameters involved in the full model that you can see on the scheme. Uh, these parameters are either Friedic or geometrical. Friedic, by example, um, the flow rate, and geometrical, by example, the, ang the alpha angle of the, of the nozzle. The simplifying assumption called the quasi-static limit is that QD stays low in comparison to QC. In other words, we assume a low flow rate of the droplet phase. And we demonstrate the validity of this approach to give a good approximation of the actual droplet size. And we then implement it in a useful droplet that uh, Benoit Scheidt will now introduce you. Okay, Benoit. Yes, it's to you. you hear me? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. Good. I can uh, share. Okay. So this is a, a small mathematical applet um, that uh, that is built essentially on the. Um, whole experiment and um, uh, numerical experiment that we've done. So as Adrien said, uh, we have scanned uh, uh, almost all, all parameters, but here you see the, the, the main ones. So you have the um, uh, interfacial tension between the two phases, and then the viscosity of the dispersed phase, viscosity of the continuous phase, and the flow rate for the dispersed phase and the continuous phase. And um, at the top, we can select um, the nozzle 30 microns, and uh, and it means the outer capillary 150, or the nozzle 90 microns, and again the outer capillary uh, 450. And you see the result, which which gives based on correlations, build on the simulations, uh, the the size of the droplet and uh, the frequency of the generation. And um, and then if you change one of the parameters, you can see, for instance, you decrease the interfacial tension, you make smaller droplets. Smaller droplets, of course, means higher frequency for a fixed uh, flow rate of the dispersed phase. Here, the viscosity is for water, the dispersed phase, and oil for the outer phase. Uh, but we can, we can change that if you increase the viscosity of the dispersed phase, you increase the, the interfacial stress and you make smaller droplets. And the same if you increase the uh, viscosity of the continuous phase. You make smaller droplet, and then you can reach very high frequency. Um, if you push the, um, I start with the flow rate of the continuous phase, then you make also smaller um, uh, droplet at higher frequency. And you can um, push the, the, the flow rate of the dispersed phase, then you increase the frequency. Because as Adrien said, the limitation of the simulation of the model is based on um, a quasi-static approximation. It means a low low flow rate of the dispersed phase. So it does not in take into account the, the slight increase of the size of the droplet as you increase the uh, flow rate of the dispersed phase. And then you can switch and take a... Um, the uh, uh, other nozzle, and you see that you make much larger, but this is maybe a bit too large, but here you see um, much larger uh, a droplet if you take a nozzle of 90, 90 uh, microns. And then again, as you increase the uh, uh, flow rate of the continuous phase, you make smaller uh, droplet, and then the same trend for the other parameters. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, it allows, of course, it's not, a, 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 uh, it's it's a good um, we call that a red drop sizer. It gives you uh, with the parameters a good idea of depending of the couple of the nozzle you choose, um, the size of the droplet you you will get based on those parameters. Okay, I'm done. Um, thank you. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, thank you, Benoit. Now let me show you two case studies with our device. The first one is the encapsulation of protein in PLGA beads. Uh, we're not going to detail because it was the subject uh, on a precedent webinar from Frigent. And if you're interested in this application, you can find more information on their website. But what you can see uh, is that using the red drop, you can encapsulate molecules. In this case, in this case, lysozyme in suspension in PLGA droplets uh, plus solvent. And then the solvent, uh, ethyl acetate in this case, is extracted in tube and beads loaded with the protein are collected. The reticulation process is so fast that an encapsulation efficiency of more than 95% is reached. Uh, and that means a very limited loss of the molecules in the continuous phase, actually, uh, contrary to the encapsulation process in batch. On the case study two, we produce polymer beads from a commercial curable UV resin. Uh, this resin was injected as the droplet phase in a, in a red drop filled with oil. And to be able to increase the production without suffering from high pressure drop, we actually need to collect the droplet in a tube larger than the extraction capillary, as you can see on the, on the scheme. But as you know, the change of tubing sections involves dramatic change in uh, fluid speed, lower speed in this case, and fast droplets from the capillary just collide with slow droplets in the large tube and you get coalescence and it's clocked. So to avoid this, we added, we added continuous phase using a T connector to accelerate the beads in the larger tubing. And finally, we exposed the 10, uh, approximately 10 centimeter tubing with UV radiation for a very short time, and we collect monodispersed solid particle that can be next functionalized for many applications. Okay, what are now the perspective of this device? First, we are working on the possibility to extend the range of droplet sizes and fluids available by playing with the nozzle. By example, we can add uh, a nozzle on the extraction capillary, as you can see image, in order to increase the shear stress uh, at the junction. Now, first, it allows to, to produce smaller droplets or bubbles in, in the case of this image, and without increasing the pressure drop because the diameter of the extraction capillary is not changed out of the junction. And secondly, it allows to generate droplets of couple of fluids with low interfacial tension, typically partially miscible fluids. Uh, then we can also use the device to generate co-flowing fluids to produce nanoparticle or liposomes at the interface. And um, in this situation, the advantage is that the interface is very homogeneous because of the axisymmetry of the design. Another interesting development is the double emulsion, a drop in a drop. Uh, nowadays, the microfluidic devices for multiple emulsion are either capillary-based, with all the manufacturing uh, complexity uh, I mentioned earlier in this presentation, or using planar chips with two successive flow-focusing junctions, as you can see on the left part of this image. In this last case, the complexity is that each flow-focusing has to be coated has to be coated with a different coating, either hydrophobic or hydrophilic. In practice, uh, neither solution is uh, satisfactory. With a red drop, we propose to generate the double emulsion using a nozzle transporting two phases. The core phase in the center channel of the nozzle and the shell phase in the outer channel of the nozzle. And the continuous phase as in the simple emulsion uh, in the chamber. Practically, you just need to change one part of the device, the injection insert, to go from a simple emulsion to a double emulsion system. So you have one device, but you have the possibility, the possibility to make simple emulsion or double emulsion by just changing one insert of the, of the, of the system. And we think that this way to produce double emulsion is very promising because it has the, rob the robustness and the versatility that the other technologies lack. So 
okay, we are very excited to offer this product to end user as soon as possible, and we hope uh, probably in autumn uh, this year. Okay, thank you for your attention. If you want more information about uh, one of these topics uh, covered in this presentation, I invite you to visit the website of uh, Sequoia or Frigent or send us an email. Okay, now we will take questions. And uh, if you don't have immediate answer to your question, no worry, we will contact you by email. Okay. I will begin with the first question. Question. Um, how to form microshells essentially in the range of 20 hundred micrometer diameter in lab using simple instruments in lab like micro pipette? The inner core of the droplet could be filled with low refractive index material. Uh, Okay, in this case, uh, this case is, is different from the from the red drop. I think it's more like the uh, a white uh, a white device. So maybe uh, okay, maybe it's not the topic of today. Okay, another question. As I understood, the three D printed tips is used directly in the device. Did you have issues when connecting when connecting it to the wall device? I'm afraid of the fragility of the photoresist. Okay, actually the, the tips, the 3D printed tips is uh, printed in a resist, in a resin, in a UV sensitive resin. And with the UV, UV curing process, the, re, the resist, the resin uh, become hard. Okay, it, it's still fragile. But we glue it to the to the to the end of the capillary, and there is no contact uh, in the chamber, in the metallic chamber. There is no contact between this this uh, this tip and other parts of the device. So the only risk is when you introduce the the insert in the chamber. But the system is is well made, and uh, usually there is there is no trouble. There is no issue with uh, with uh, fragility of the um, of the tip. Photoresist himself is not very fragile, but okay, the 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 part is very small. So if you if it if it if it goes into contact with hard uh, materials, okay, there could be an issue. Are you using flexible tubing for this? Uh, yes, actually, we connect the red drop uh, using flexible tubing, uh, using uh, standard um, upchurch fittings. But inside the red drop, we only used uh, glass capillaries coated with uh, capton, with a polyimide films to, to increase the durability. Because we cannot use flexible uh, tubing inside the red drop because we need uh, alignment and you can only get alignment uh, using uh, rigid capillary. But this capillary is very short, so it's uh, two centimeters for the input, for the input capillary, uh, about two centimeters for the output capillary, and the rest of the, the, rest of the capillaries of the tubing is uh, classical tubing, uh, PTFA, what you want. Uh, can we control both temperature and pressure? Yes, it's a good question. Actually, we control the pressure of the of the fluid using a pressure controller. But we we studied a case uh, in which we we wanted to to control temperature. So because the the metallic chamber is a uh, very uh, a good conductive a uh, good conductor for heat, we just applied the heat uh, heat resist resistance on the on the metallic chamber. And we could uh, monitor the, the temperature inside the chamber very precisely. So yes, it's possible. It's very easy to, to make. It's possible, yes. Ador, is there an ideal size of droplets for size of cell use for second cell encapsulation? Uh, actually, the droplets uh, used in cell encapsulation is in the range of the droplet generated by the red drop. It's it's uh, it's, it's around uh, 
twenty to hundred microns, I would say. So yes, the, we are. It's possible to use it for cell encapsulation. We are in the good in the good range. But don't forget that if you want to to work with other range, you can key the chamber and change the inserts to with another nozzle, another extra, extraction capillary, and you you can have access to other uh, ranges. How this technique compares to membrane emulsification? Um, yeah, membrane emulsification is for uh, high production, but uh, as I know, the monodispersity is not so high. With microfluidic device like uh, flow focusing and, uh, and the red drop, what you what you get is a very high control of the size and the monodispersity. Is the red drop size available online? Uh, not yet, but yes, uh, we we plan to to make it available online as soon as possible. Yes, of course. Um, how low the size of the droplets and double emulsion can be brought down to using this technology? Okay, as I show you on this slide, we can reduce the size of the droplets uh, by using two nozzles, one nozzle to inject the droplet phase and one nozzle to collect the, um, the droplets on the extraction capillary. And doing that, so we increase the shear stress on the on the on the jet phase, on the droplet phase, sorry, and we can decrease the size of the droplets. We reach uh, 12, 10 microns using this uh, this system. Yeah. So I would say that the limit uh, is yes, is uh, is 10 microns for for the moment, using this kind of uh, of system with two uh, two nozzles. Okay, what is the solvent compatibility with the photoresist used for the nozzle? Uh, actually, this resin is uh, proprietary, so we don't have all the, the chemicals used to, to, to make it. But as we know for our experience, it's very resistant to a most, uh, most solvent, uh, ethyl, uh, ethyl acetate, uh, acetone, ethanol, uh, we tested dichloromethane, uh, but Maybe we we don't we don't test it all this uh, solvent for a long uh, exposition, so we have no data for for that. But we know that uh, short exposure it, it's okay. Actually, it's a, it's an acrylate based resin, so so you can you can get the the solvent um, you can easily get the solvent compatibility uh, on uh, on the web. When you polymerize the polymer drops, how will you control the UV light energy? Will the UV light polymerize the middle phase material? Okay, uh, actually the, the polymerization with using UV light just initiates polymerization uh, because we add a photo initiator in the, in, the, in the resin. So the reticulation will continue after the UV light is, uh, is switched is switch off. So we initiate the polymerization in the, in the tube. We get hard material, so we, we don't have any more coalescent tissue, but the reticulation uh, continues in the, in the collect uh, recipient, collect reservoir. Uh, can we use red drop sizer with the PDMS device? Uh, the answer is no, 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 because the the model is uh, only for uh, for the red drop. Actually, the geometry is totally different, so you you can't definitely use it for PDMS device. Uh, which future variation of the device can you expect it to go in nanometer uh, range? Um, actually, uh, yes and yes and no. No, because in the dripping regime, you cannot uh, expect to, to get droplets in the nanometer uh, range. But if you work with uh, um, co-flow, as you can see on, the, on this slide, you can, you can uh, get uh, nanoparticles at the interface of both uh, fluids. That the, that's one way of uh, producing uh, nanoparticles of our liposomes. 
okay, but you you will not uh, you will not get uh, the 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 monodispersity as in the dripping regime, of course. Uh, with this technology you have presented, is it possible to create double Janus-like emulsion droplets? Um, I think that for Janus-like emulsion droplets, we need to add a phase. So for the moment, uh, we cannot generate this kind of, uh, of droplets. Uh, what are maximal pressure and temperature? Uh, maximal pressure, we have a test at 30 bar and uh, it was okay. So it's it's very uh, more than the limit of our pressure controller, but we, we just made a test to to see if the if the system is robust to, to pressure and actually it is, but maybe it can it can uh, resist to higher pressure. And uh, temperature, we 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 have a test. We have data with a temperature of uh, 100 degrees. So yes, it can reach this temperature. Maybe maybe higher, but uh, we have no indication. Of, uh, we have no data, but that we know is that the epoxy glue will not resist uh, above 300 uh, degrees, and the nozzle also. So maybe it's a good idea not to, to go uh, above uh, 100 degrees. Uh, what kind of UV lights, uh, of UV lamps do you use to primarize the particles? In this case, it was uh, lead, yes. Less in the UV, UVB, yeah. And the dose, uh, the others I didn't remember. I can send you an email if you want a more precise. But it, okay, it will. De it, it's a fine tuning. It will depend of the of the resin, of the quantity, of the amount of uh, photo initiator. So okay, you have to adapt the the length of the tubing, the power of the lamp. Actually, the distance between the lamp and the and the tubing, to to find the good uh, the good the good exposure time. The goal in, in this case is to have the the the, um, the smaller as possible tubing to avoid clogging, but to have to also have a uh, good polymerizations to avoid coalescence. So it's a, it's a trade off between the the pore and the and the length of the of the tubing. Is this possible to scale up with this technique for nano emulsion? Uh, I think I, I just answered to this question. The nanoparticles, it's it's possible, but using the the co-flow, not in the dripping regime. So with the with the co-flow, you will get a precipitation on the interface of the of the, the two phases. In using the redrop, you can generate very homogeneous uh, co-flow. So the the nanoparticles at the interface will be very homogeneous. So Okay, you will not get monodispersity, but you will get um, a good a good size distribution for your nanoparticles. What is the minimum volume of liquid sample needed to start forming micro droplets using the red drop size or techniques? I'm asking this especially for expensive liquids. Um, Okay, uh, a few milliliters, it's okay. Because, okay, to fill the chamber, to fit for the continuous phase, you need a few milliliters. But for the continuous, for the, for the droplet phase, sorry, uh, just one millimeter, it's okay to generate a lot of, of droplets because one droplet, one droplet is a sub nanoliter. Uh, so with one milliliter, you can generate a lot of droplets. But you will need a bigger amount of, uh, of liquids to to fill the, the chamber and, and uh, initiate your uh, your experiment. Uh, yeah, the drill up device can be sold. I may, maybe uh, Adam can uh, answer this question. The question is do the question is do red drop device can be sold standalone for from uh, Frigent? I see they have a standard pack and automation pack. 
Yeah, so at Fugent, uh, we have um, uh, different solutions. So we can s uh, sell the red drop as a standalone project, but we also have dedicated pack for uh, polymer uh, macroparticle projection for PLGA, for example, and we have standard pack, automation pack, and full pack to uh, help customer to start with uh, microfluidic and uh, red drop easily. So yes, we can sell the red drop as a um, standalone project. Okay, thank you, Adam. Uh, is the device, uh, another question, is the device applicable to room temperature liquids only? I mean, if someone is interested from, from, to form droplets in a specific phase existing above 30 Kelvin, above room temperature, does this device process a kind of micro heater that could precisely raise the temperature? Okay, um, I already answered to this question, actually. This device is not equipped uh, for this for at the moment with uh, a heater, but it is in metal, so it is very easy to 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 plug a resistance, a heater, on the on one side of the device to to heat the system. And because there is a high volume of the a high volume, a few milliliter of uh, continuous phase, the temperature will be very homogeneous in the in the chamber. So we have an we have data because we we, we made this experiment with uh, with a heater. So we we don't uh, have this this product at uh, at Frigent, but it's possible to make it uh, in the lab very very easily. Yeah. Okay. For the last question for, uh, on my list, what is the price? I let uh, Adam answer. Yeah, so regarding prices, uh, we'll not talk about prices in this webinar, but if you have, uh, if you want to know more about prices and different packages, uh, you can contact us directly uh, and uh, we will answer uh, in a specific conversation. I think that will be more appropriate. Okay, any question? If you are not satisfied with the answer, don't hesitate to contact us uh, to to have a, a more deep discussion about a specific topic. I saw that the the, the temperature is a, is a very hot topic, um, so don't hesitate to contact us. And how how to contact? Okay, you you have on the on the presentation you have uh, Frigent and Sequoia uh, contact mail. Both are, uh, are okay because we, we communicate. So you can, uh, you can send an email to Fusion or Sequoia. No, 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 no trouble. Thank you very much for your participation uh, at this uh, webinar. And uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, just a reminder, so we have put some polls where you can uh, answer. So this is mainly regarding your uh, work, your application area, regarding droplets uh, diameter that you are using at the application that you are working with. So if you want to share this with us, that will help us to know exactly what on what kind of application are you working with, and that will help us to design the best project to fit your needs. So feel free to to answer this uh, this poll. Um. So yeah, we want to thank you again for your participation. Um, we hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, we remind you that um, a recording of the presentation will be available tomorrow on our platform and our, our website. And yeah, please have a look uh, at our dedicated page for the list of Regent's upcoming webinars. And um, yeah, if there is uh, any other question we didn't answer, uh, we'll do it in the following minutes. So yeah, we wish you a pleasant rest of your day. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.